Today, we're looking at hybrids, plug-ins, and fully electric cars. Those are three different technologies that confuse a lot of people. So, what's the difference in each technology? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? And which one is best? So, let's get under the hood and dive right in. Electric vehicle technology has really expanded these last few decades, so much so that we have many different types of alternative fuel technologies, and that list is sure to grow. Today, we won't have time to talk about the fuel cell electric vehicle, FCEV, or the range extended electric vehicles, REV, but this video will only focus on hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and fully electric vehicles. First, let's find what each technology is. Let's start with a hybrid electric, also called HEV. Most people have heard of the Honda Insight and the Toyota Prius. Those were the earliest ones to enter the market, and they grew in popularity worldwide because of rising gasoline prices and environmental concerns. And today, there are many other makes and models in the market. So what's a hybrid EV? Put simply, it's a 100% gas-fueled car that doesn't rely solely on its gas engine for motion. That's because the hybrid also has an electric motor. The electric motor sometimes powers the car and delays the use of the gas engine to save fuel. At times, both the gas engine and electric motor work together for added power. In a standard hybrid car, the combustion engine drives a generator, which recharges the battery as you drive. The battery is also charged using regenerative braking, which captures waste energy as the car slows down. These cars are sometimes called self-charging hybrids. Hybrids have been in the market since the late 1990s, much longer than plug-ins or all-electric cars. Hybrid sales peaked in 2013 with some 500,000 and hybrids are sold. Currently, some of the most popular hybrids in the world include the Toyota RAV4, Ford Fusion, and Toyota Prius. In late 2010, Chevrolet released the Bolt in the U.S. It was the first commercially available plug-in hybrid EV. So what's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, or PHEV? And how does it differ from the standard hybrid EV or the fully electric vehicle? A plug-in hybrid is similar to a hybrid in that it has a gas tank, electric motor, and battery. But the battery is larger and it also has a charging port. So you can recharge a PHEV via an external power source, like your house. When the battery is charged and the gas engine is dormant, the car drives and behaves pretty much like a fully electric vehicle. But when the battery runs down, then the gas engine comes to life so that the car can continue moving much like a conventional hybrid. Like the hybrid, the PHEV also uses regenerative braking to save fuel. Some people make the mistake of calling a plug-in hybrid a hybrid, but that's not entirely correct. If you can plug your hybrid in and fill it up, it's a plug-in hybrid. Let's talk about the fully electric or battery electric vehicle known as the BEV. Did you know that the majority of battery electric cars in the U.S. are on the West Coast? Doesn't surprise me. Predominantly, it's in California, Washington, Oregon, followed by Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. In 2006, there was a small Silicon Valley startup in the name of Tesla Motors. It aimed to make a luxury electric sports car that could cover more than 200 miles on a single charge. The first Tesla Roadster was delivered in 2008. It was the first highway legal serial production all-electric car to use lithium-ion battery cells. In 2010, Tesla received a $465 million loan from the Department of Energy, which, by the way, Tesla repaid nine years earlier than scheduled. Tesla used the loan to build a manufacturing facility in California. So how does the all-electric or battery electric car different from the hybrid or plug-in hybrid? The clue is the name itself. A BEV runs exclusively on an electric battery. This type of car doesn't have a gasoline engine or gas tank. Needless to say, since the all-electric car runs only on battery, you can see why the battery and electric motor of BEVs are significantly larger than those of a hybrid. Other recognizable examples of all electric vehicles include the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Nissan Leaf. Now that we've defined each technology, let's dive a little deeper. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each system compared to each other and to the conventional internal combustion engine? Let's start with pure hybrids. They usually cost less than plug-in hybrids or battery electric cars. There's also a lot more hybrid models to choose from compared to other alternative technologies. With a hybrid, you don't have to change much of your habits. You just pump in gas that you normally do with a traditional combustion engine car. And the rest of the time, your car is charging itself up when you're driving, coasting, or braking. A hybrid, in essence, is self-charging. So you don't have to worry about recharging your car via an external source. A hybrid pretty much drives like the regular automatic car, since the car's computer and electronic system does the thinking for you when it chooses how best to optimize efficiency or power. The task of the electric motor in a hybrid is to reduce the load on the internal combustion engine. And the gas engine, in turn, can be used as an electricity generator that operates the electric motors. With a hybrid, 
The electric motor handles light effort duties like low speed acceleration and driving and stop and go traffic. The electric motor is more efficient at generating torque and the internal combustion engine is more efficient at maintaining high speeds. So switching between the engine and electric motor for different speeds and different situations means your car can use fuel more efficiently than a traditional combustion engine. A driver of a hybrid cannot manually choose whether to drive on fuel or electricity. The switching process is controlled by a powerful computer that determines the mode depending on the driving situation. For example, let's say you're down downtown you're stuck in traffic well the computer knows it's more economical to use electricity later when you've cleared traffic and your car needs to pick up the full speed the car will switch to the gasoline engine what if your car needs to accelerate intensively and more often in that case the computer can turn on the engine and the motor at the same time so you can see how smart it is and that's why hybrids outperform combustion engine cars in terms of city mileage but the downside with a hybrid comes when you're traveling at higher speeds it's not as economical also hybrids can only drive a short distance on battery alone usually a mile or so. so it's at a disadvantage compared to a plug-in hybrid or all electric vehicle in terms of electric range. That is the reason why hybrids make more sense if you're a city driver. But now let's look at the plug-in hybrid. One advantage is less range anxiety. Since a plug-in hybrid has a larger battery, a typical PHEV can drive some 20 to 30 miles on battery alone. So you can see it has more electric range than a conventional hybrid, which can only drive a mile or so on battery alone. Once the battery is empty, the car replies by turning on the gas engine until you're able to recharge. But the plug-in's larger battery also comes with disadvantages. Since the battery is larger, the car can't recharge itself while driving the way a hybrid can. That's why you have to plug it in and recharge the battery. Also, the larger battery means extra weight, which affects how it drives and the gas mileage it gets. So if your lifestyle is such that you don't mind letting your car sit at night to recharge, and if your regular city daily commute is short and within the electric range, then a PHEV is a good option for you. But if your route involves regular long journeys, then the battery becomes dead weight when your battery goes flat. This means reduced car performance and more fuel costs compared to even a conventional internal combustion engine car. Bottom line is the PHEV is beneficial if you have specific short commutes or journey styles. Another advantage to a PHEV is that it can offer very quick acceleration, like all electric cars, but that feature is expensive and is usually available in range-topping high-performance models. A disadvantage is the need for charging facilities, so you want to be mindful of how easy and accessible those are, depending on where you live or drive. But let's take a look at the all-electric or battery electric car. One advantage with a fully electric car is that you don't need to visit the gas station or get regular oil changes. Many BEVs can sometimes do two to 300 miles or more before requiring a full recharge. The Lucid Air can do up to 517 miles and has 1,080 horsepower offer the most electric range compared to the hybrid or plug-in hybrid. Nevertheless, its driving range is still lower than the 300 mile per tank average of a traditional combustion engine. The EV's high capacity battery packs are large since the car relies solely on battery power. The actual batteries are typically lithium ion cells that are stacked and then grouped into modules. That's why electric cars cost more than equivalent combustion engine cars. In fact, some can be 20 to 30 percent more. But industry analysts expect the price gap to get smaller in the years to come. An electric car needs to be plugged in to be recharged, similar to a plug-in hybrid car. So one of the most common concerns is how or where to charge the car. A standard EV can take 30 minutes to reach 80% battery capacity if you're using the fastest, most powerful, most expensive chargers out there. But if you use the more affordable charger, well, it's lower powered, so recharging can take hours. An advantage, of course, to the BEV is a zero tailpipe emissions. As such, you may qualify for certain federal tax credits and incentives, depending on the vehicle make and model and the capacity of the car's battery pack measured in kilowatt hours. So which is best, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or all electric? At the end of the day, it really depends on your specific driving routine, lifestyle, and comfort. It's no one-size-fits-all. So here's the thing. If you want to burn less gas and have better fuel efficiency than a traditional combustion engine, then a hybrid is a good option. The hybrid emits less pollutants into the air. You don't really need to change your current driving habits at all, and the cost isn't that much more than a conventional combustion engine car. An all-electric car means no more trips to the gas station or oil changes. You also get a performance boost combined with zero emission. But if you're not keen about setting up a home charging station, or you're not comfortable with finding charging ports away from home, or if you're not open to paying more for an EV, then the battery electric car might not be the best choice for you. A plug-in hybrid can be the best of both worlds. If your driving needs are fairly routine and predictable, you can use electricity. If you want to take an occasional road trip, then the gas engine will do the job without needing to recharge. 
Also, the price of a PHEV is typically somewhere between the cost of a hybrid and a fully electric car. So they're a great choice if you want to try out fully electric cars, because when you run out of electricity, then the gas engine runs and you're not stranded anywhere. But now you tell me what's your preference. Please comment and share your opinions and experiences below. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel for more car history and technology videos. Thanks for your support.